this is the concluding tutorial in this whole sniffer series in which we go ahead and decode the data now let's try and summarize the way in which this whole uh, the workflow has worked for this whole sniffer discussion so first of all we learned how to basically pick up a raw packet and display it in hex then we systematically went and displayed first the ethernet header then the ip and then the tcp header so now as we remember in the whole osi model after this is the application layer to which the actual data would be passed so it is also important that we know what data is going through because as we can remember in promiscuous mode we are able to see data of all computers on the network it's not just our computer but every computer so it could be interesting to see what sort of a data is being transferred between computers and that is where the data parsing comes in actually compared to the uh, previous parsing of the ip tcp ethernet headers data parsing is very simple once we can locate the exact position from where the data starts in the packet we can either choose to do a hex dump or an ascii dump in this example i'm doing a hex dump i'm leaving it to you to dump the data portion of the packet in ascii it might happen that the ascii portion might not always make sense for example in this case because ssh is a traffic which is more predominant and we have do not have any filters in our program yet because of which what will happen is we would actually see encrypted data another thing is not all packets will contain data so just because this is more of a data parsing demonstration i will force the program to go on parsing packets till it reaches a data packet so let's look at main program flow once again is exactly the same as in all previous programs we have discussed till now first we go ahead and create the raw socket then we bind the socket to the interface then we get the number of sockets to sniff then we start sniffing and print each one of these packets in hex so here is our familiar receive from which is used to receive the packets once a packet is received successfully we print it in hex go ahead parse the ethernet header parse the ip header then we parse the tcp header now what we do after that is a simple check if the packet is an ip as well as a tcp packet if so then we go ahead and parse the data now let's quickly look at what this function does it's simple we've already done the functionality we've covered the functionality in previous example all this function is going to do is check whether the ethernet protocol is first of all ip if so it goes ahead and decodes the ip header and finds if the ip header encapsulation is tcp that is all it does we could have added this into the data parsing itself but it would just have gotten a little too long so a simple code snippet here which is going to check if the packet is ip and tcp because only then are we interested currently to display the data if so we go ahead and parse the data so what does the data parsing routing look like it is exactly same as previously we have defined our ethernet header first the ip header next the tcp header and then finally the data header what do we check for we check for first of all if there is any data available or not by using the length check and at least the length should be greater than all the ethernet ip and tcp all these three headers put together right we already know that the packet is an ip and tcp packet right that check was there so we go ahead and decode the ip header after the ethernet header by adding that much of offset to the packet array then what we do is we go ahead and find where the data is located now the place where data would be located would basically be after the ip and the tcp header so first what we do is we find out where does data start from by looking at the size of the ethernet header here then we find the size of the ip header here we have discussed already how ihl works and then finally we go ahead and do a size of on the tcp header so now we know that after this is where the data starts right now we have to know that the data starts here but how long is the data data underscore len one way of course is finding out is to know the whole packet size and then subtracting it subtracting it from the offset where data is located another cleaner way of doing it is basically first of all finding 
the IP header, uh, the IP packet length itself. Now, as we can remember, the IP header had a member called TOT underscore length, which is nothing but the total length of the IP header. Now, because this is two bytes and it's a short and it's a network byte order, we convert it into host byte order by using N to OHS, network to host short. So this gives us the total size of the IP packet. Note that this size, uh, this size actually contains both the IP header, the TCP header, as well as the data size. So actually, everything contained after the IP header is the IP header total length along with the header itself, right? So we have to subtract the IP header length and the TCP header length from this total length in order to find the data length. Let me put this once again, maybe this was not that clear. The IP header total length field contains the total length of the IP header plus the TCP header plus the data. So now in order to find the length of the data, we'll have to subtract the IP header length and the TCP header length from the IP header total length, right? So once we do this, we get the data length. Now we check if data length is greater than zero. If yes, we call the print in hex function and print out the data. If no, then basically we say no data in packet and return zero. The importance is because we at least want to see some data, we do a check that if parse data returns zero, in which case this not would make it one, then increase the packets to sniff by one. So as we can see, normally we give one as inputs for the number of packets to sniff. And what might happen is it might not be sufficient enough to get a data packet. So till the time we do not get a data packet, this loop would be running because we are incrementing packets to sniff by one. If the packet we encountered does not contain any data. So let's go ahead and compile this program. Once again, compilation is very simple as we've done till now. Then we run this program, one packet, but you'll actually see that a lot of packets scroll by before we get a data packet. So we can see that a lot of packets are going. The reason is because they were not data packets. Maybe they are just an acknowledgement packets contain just an act. So finally we get a data packet, which is destination port is 22. The data length is 52 bytes. And here is the dump of the data in ASCII format. So it starts from A15661. So as we can notice here, this is actually our data portion. And exactly that is what we have got right starts at a156 ends in ae3 same here starts in a156 ends in a3 so this is basically the encapsulated data after all the headers and we are able to parse it because this communication is ssh hence this data would actually be encrypted so to summarize now we have learned how to parse a full packet go through the headers, find out where the data is and then dump the data on the screen. So with this, I would end this tutorial and I would advise you to just change some small things here and there in the program, display a couple of more headers and play along with it in order to gain more familiarity with the subject. Thank you.